there are far, far better things ahead than any we leave behind. You can never get a cup of tea large enough or a book long enough to suit me. I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. Love is not affectionate feeling, but a steady wish for the loved person's ultimate good as far as it can be obtained. It is a good rule after reading a new book, never to allow yourself another new one till you have read an old one in between. Someday you will be old enough to start reading fairy tales again. To be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. You can make anything by writing. It would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy has offered us, like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. A children's story that can only be enjoyed by children is not a good children's story in the slightest. We are not necessarily doubting that God will do the best for us, we are wondering how painful the best will turn out to be. I have learned now that while those who speak about one's miseries usually hurt, those who keep silence hurt more. Mental pain is less dramatic than physical pain, but it is more common and also harder to bear. The frequent attempt to conceal mental pain increases the burden, it is easier to say my tooth is aching than to say my heart is broken. God can't give us peace and happiness apart from himself because there is no such thing. The Christian does not think God will love us because we are good, but that God will make us good because he loves us. Critics who treat adult as a term of approval, instead of as a merely descriptive term, cannot be adult themselves. To be concerned about being grown up, to admire the grown up because it is grown up, to blush at the suspicion of being childish, these things are the marks of childhood and adolescence. And in childhood and adolescence they are, in moderation, healthy symptoms. Young things ought to want to grow. But to carry on into middle life or even into early manhood this concern about being adult is a mark of really arrested development. When I was 10, I read fairy tales in secret and would have been ashamed if I had been found doing so. Now that I am 50 I read them openly. When I became a man I put away childish things, including the fear of childishness and the desire to be very grown up. I can't imagine a man really enjoying a book and reading it only once. Love is something sterner and more splendid than mere kindness. Education without values, as useful as it is, seems rather to make man a cleverer devil. What you see and what you hear depends a great deal on where you are standing. It also depends on what sort of person you are. If you look for truth, you may find comfort in the end, if you look for comfort you will not get either comfort or truth only soft soap and wishful thinking to begin, and in the end, despair. Crying is alright in its way while it lasts. But you have to stop sooner or later, and then you still have to decide what to do. We meet no ordinary people in our lives. My argument against God was that the universe seemed so cruel and unjust. But how had I got this idea of just and unjust? A man does not call a line crooked unless he has some idea of a straight line. What was I comparing this universe with when I called it unjust? If we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. 
eating and reading are two pleasures that combine admirably. Things never happen the same way twice. The great thing to remember is that though our feelings come and go God's love for us does not. I think that if God forgives us we must forgive ourselves. Otherwise, it is almost like setting up ourselves as a higher tribunal than him. Imagine yourself as a living house. God comes in to rebuild that house. At first, perhaps, you can understand what he is doing. He is getting the drains right and stopping the leaks in the roof and so on. You knew that those jobs needed doing and so you are not surprised. But presently he starts knocking the house about in a way that hurts abominably and does not seem to make any sense. What on earth is he up to? The explanation is that he is building quite a different house from the one you thought of, throwing out a new wing here, putting on an extra floor there, running up towers, making courtyards. You thought you were being made into a decent little cottage, but he is building a palace. He intends to come and live in it himself. Atheism turns out to be too simple. If the whole universe has no meaning, we should never have found out that it has no meaning. Even in literature and art, no man who bothers about originality will ever be original, whereas if you simply try to tell the truth, without caring tuppence how often it has been told before, you will, nine times out of ten, become original without ever having noticed it. Courage, dear heart. Pain insists upon being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our consciences, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Don't use words too big for the subject. Don't say infinitely when you mean very, otherwise, you'll have no word left when you want to talk about something really infinite. Miracles are a retelling in small letters of the very same story which is written across the whole world in letters too large for some of us to see. The future is something which everyone reaches at the rate of 60 minutes an hour, whatever he does, whoever he is. You never know how much you really believe anything until its truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life and death to you. A man can no more diminish God's glory by refusing to worship him than a lunatic can put out the sun by scribbling the word darkness on the walls of his cell. He died not for men, but for each man. If each man had been the only man made, he would have done no less. No book is really worth reading at the age of 10 which is not equally, and often far more, worth reading at the age of 50 and beyond. The task of the modern educator is not to cut down jungles, but to irrigate deserts. To have faith in Christ means, of course, trying to do all that he says. There would be no sense in saying you trusted a person if you would not take his advice. Thus, if you have really handed yourself over to him, it must follow that you are trying to obey him. But trying in a new way, a less worried way. Not doing these things in order to be saved, but because he has begun to save you already. Not hoping to get to heaven as a reward for your actions, but inevitably wanting to act in a certain way because the first faint gleam of heaven is already inside you. No one ever told me that grief felt so like fear. Everyone thinks forgiveness is a lovely idea until he has something to forgive. Now the trouble about trying to make yourself stupider than you really are that you very often succeed. I know now, Lord, why you are to no answer. You are yourself the answer. Before your face questions die away. What other answer would suffice? There was a boy called Eustace Clarence Scrub, and he almost deserved it. 
God allows us to experience the low points of life in order to teach us lessons that we could learn in no other way. When we lose one blessing, another is often most unexpectedly given in its place. You would not have called to me unless I had been calling to you, said the lion. A silly idea is current that good people do not know what temptation means. This is an obvious lie. Only those who try to resist temptation know how strong it is. A man who gives in to temptation after five minutes simply does not know what it would have been like an hour later. That is why bad people, in one sense, know very little about badness. They have lived a sheltered life by always giving in. Child, to say the very thing you really mean, the whole of it, nothing more or less or other than what you really mean, that's the whole art and joy of words. Faith, in the sense in which I am here using the word, is the art of holding on to things your reason has once accepted, in spite of your changing moods. Peter did not feel very brave, indeed, he felt he was going to be sick. But that made no difference to what he had to do. Do not waste time bothering whether you love your neighbor, act as if you did. As soon as we do this we find one of the great secrets. When you are behaving as if you loved someone, you will presently come to love him. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.